Hi everyone, welcome back to the ATP Project. Now let's get straight back into our episode with Kara. No, well, let's switch it up now. Let's okay. talk business. Okay. Yes. You're quite the businesswoman now. So obviously. Quite the entrepreneur, which is French for risk taker. <laughs> yes. Trying. Yeah. yeah. Learning. Got to try. Yeah. Well, the funny thing is, and you'll know this as well too, the analogies between sport business, sport business success is just so the same. Yeah. I mean, when you're talking about this as well too, obviously I'm not a finely tuned athlete like yourself, but <laughs> You know, COVID sucks for business and exactly the same thing, the setbacks, the work that you put in, then this thing falls apart, yep. things outside of your circumstance. You can sit there and cry about it or you can go, right, how do I navigate this? Mm-hmm. And how do I then utilize this for mental strength, for, I hate saying it because I've used in the business word, but pivoting, mm-hmm. you know, how do you, how do you set your sails from, if the wind changes direction, going in the same direction just doesn't make sense, right? Yeah. You, you've got to use the wind and you can get to where you want to go, but you may need to zigzag a little bit. So yeah, that's right. Same, same, right? Yeah, and sometimes you just got to be the last man standing. Mm, like, yeah, you just gotta, exactly. it's like you just stay standing up. Like yeah. you just, just <laughs> keep being there, keep showing up, and then it pays off eventually. Like, yes, like you know, Stephen Bradbury. And then, yeah, <laughs> legit. <laughs> that was real. I went to yeah. school with Stephen. Yeah. So Um, we spoke about obviously crossed a bit through Mm -hmm. the pandemic, having a toddler, but then also you launched a business, Active Eyewear. Yes. Active Eyewear. Yes. So we launched, um, I remember like obviously like any business, you're putting it together for quite some time before you take it to launch, right? Even like a new product or anything. There's so much time before that, before you take it to launch. And then um, we had a plan launch date. It got pushed back. And then we were set to launch in like July 2020. So mm-hmm. it's like only a couple yeah. of months away from the world freaking out just where the news was like everything COVID, like yeah. going crazy. And, you know, we've got to sit down and be like, do we go ahead with this or do we wait? Do we like, what do we do? We've already invested all this money and time into like the product. The stock is sitting there. Like you don't want to be sitting on stock. Mm-hmm. So um, I kind of was like, look, in my opinion, I think we go full steam ahead. Um, we shift our approach a little bit and the world's a little bit scared like everyone's a little bit scared and things are a little bit different right now so let's make this a positive let's give people something to get excited about while everyone's at home stuck sitting on their phones you know in this uncertain time like this is when it's really fresh like let's just change how we do this and make it super fun um so we did these like big giveaways, like big Mm. prizes, people wanting to train at home. They didn't, you know, they couldn't go to their gym at that time. We're like, let's give people stuff. Let's get involved. And let's entering. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. We had, we had some great prizes. We had some awesome stuff. We linked up with some companies that like we're connected to and went, let's do this like really cool thing. And, um, you know, for me, like how I kind of do business is, is like you said, it's very much like how I am as an athlete, but also like how, where my center is as a person and um, I wanted it to be a good experience and have it be something like a fond memory for people that they go, oh, yeah, that was really cool in a tricky time rather than get lost in the tricky time. Mm. So I was like, let's stand out. Let's use it, you know, to our advantage and let's also kind of give back to people who need something a little bit more positive right now. And so we just went for it. Super glad we did. Obviously, then once you get into the day to day, you're having to navigate a pandemic. So mm-hmm. it was like still wild. The the shipping, you'd yes. know. <laughs> oh, yes. We know shipping. The shipping was probably like, you know, we're e-com. So, um, you know, even just like production, shipping, every, the, the con- like customer service. In saying that, again, the positive perspective side of me, which I always come back to, we hadn't have had that we wouldn't have had the opportunity to build the rapport and to build our customer service the way that we did because we had to go above and beyond on the service we had to make sure that we made these people understand that they were valuable to us as mm-hmm. our customers that we valued them taking a gamble on our new product that they didn't know taking a gamble on me you know doing mm-hmm. it to support me like a huge part of our community were like supporting me and just buying them because they'd mm-hmm. known me through the sport yeah um and and then bearing with us while there were things we couldn't control like shipping mm. um you know things kind of getting lost and delayed and just stuff everywhere so you know i remember being on the computer like on customer service like we were it was all hands on deck like just making sure that everyone was getting replied to right away if anyone was like not happy or comfortable like i'll refund you or do whatever i'll send them to you and like we were giving sunglasses to them like just keep them don't worry yeah. you know i hand delivered 
a pair of sunglasses that had gone missing for five weeks. And I had a look at this lady and she lived in Brisbane when I was living in Brisbane. And I had some random stock on hand at my house. And I grabbed a pair and I drove to her house with my daughter (laughs) and knocked on her door. And she like lost it and gave her sunglasses. And I'm like, you know, like those opportunities probably wouldn't have happened and we wouldn't have kind of. <laughs> what did she say when she saw? She obviously was, she knew who you she were. She did. She was a huge fan. She was so sweet. I think her partner had seen me like reverse down the driveway and he's like called out and he's like, oh, do you like need to come out here or whatever? And she's just frozen, like just absolutely frozen and like shaking and got a photo and she got her glasses and I was like, I couldn't bear. I kept like, no. I'm communicating with like the postal service going like, yep. this has been five weeks oh, and no. this this woman lives down the road for me. This isn't okay. It was eating me up. I'm like, I'm going to go see what I've got. And I took them to her. Um, obviously, I couldn't, I wish I could have done that for everyone. Everyone. No. I wish I could have hand delivered them around the world, but not possible. Um, so, you know, all we could do is just be there and just make sure that, you know, people were happy. Um, and that their experience with our business was good because that lasts a lot longer than anything oh, and else. All of those things that you did in that time frame would have created customers for life too. Yeah, yeah. and it was stressful, right? Oh, like yeah. so, yeah, yeah. I would put Scotty to bed, and then I'd go straight downstairs onto my computer and open up customer service, and you've got like this hasn't come, this has happened, blah blah blah. And it's all stuff that's out of our control. We've done our bit. Mm-hmm. But you We've have done to same own day it. dispatch. You know, packed it all up, got the product, done everything we could do on our part. And then we still have to solve the problem that uh, my old coach used to say, like, it's not my fault, but it's my problem. Like, you know, in that, in that situation. And so we have to take that on. um, And then I, and to have that before you go to bed every night, Mm -hmm. you know, just going through that and being like, you know, just lying in bed, like, oh, I've just had to like send all this stuff and sort all this stuff out, make sure these people are okay. That was super hard. Um, And luckily it's, you know, uh, you know what, it's been an up and down roller coaster since because obviously things keep changing it's pretty good we're doing mm-hmm. okay everything we have to be a little bit more planned out a little bit more ahead of time to make sure that we account for that now we're still learning I'm oh, still yeah. learning I have never been a business owner like this before like I have this is a totally new world to me I'm an athlete right first and foremost I'm an athlete super basic chick I research stuff as best I can and learn what I can so I'm just learning from my partners and from people involved in the business and just trying to soak up as much as I can. Yeah. And just mm. wing it. But we've got the right, but I've got other people that know more than I do. So that's good. That's good. <laughs> yeah, and, <laughs> Need and, a good team. But no, at its essence at the end of the day, I think that's what it comes down to is this really putting yourself in that person's shoes and, and, and you say you're hundred percent right. So you, you, you've done everything perfectly. You've received the order, you've sent it out and then the courier has dropped the ball or what have you customer doesn't know that the customer no. placed an order with you right mm-hmm. so then you better sort it out as quick as you possibly can that's right. but turning up gary vanyacek uh, do you know who he is he did the same thing he's from um oh yeah uh, yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah 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 tiktok everything now yeah uh, i think he was one of the first people on tiktok if i remember correctly mm-hmm. but um same thing yeah. he he actually had um someone had ordered from wine cellars i forget what was the name of his his original it was remember. an alcohol he had a wine business yeah, yeah. and uh, yeah he drove it like 40 minutes across town to deliver you know, this thing and he's like pumped and he gets there and I think he gives it to the guy. If I remember the story correct, I hope I'm not mixing things up. And um, the guy basically gave him some lip, shut the door in his face. <laughs> you know, so, so, and Wasn't maybe a you're fan? In, no, well, no, pissed off, right? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. And didn't know who Gary was at that time. And I don't think Gary was particularly yeah, big no, at that yeah. time. He was just the son of the the owner of the store, right? Yeah. But that's the kind of thing that you, you just have to, you have to do, you know, yeah. and, and you can't, it's results and excuses at the end of the day. Yeah, so the well, customers don't right. give a crap about your excuse. They just want to know that you can get them a result. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I'm in a bit of a tricky position too, right? Because I'm um, in a very privileged position, but also tricky at times in that I'm not a business owner first. I'm an athlete who then fell into having a profile. You know, I didn't, I didn't set out to become an influencer. Mm. I just did well and people started following me. So that I had to learn how to do that, right? Because that's not, I I just am good at exercising. So, and then I went into that. And then now when you start a business, that now becomes a reflection of me. So people know my face first. They know me personally. And so now like everything I'm attached to, I take very seriously because that becomes a real like mirror image of who I am as a person and what I value. So if that, if the business is not aligned with me, then, you know, 
well, we just can't have that. <laughs> you know, like it has yep. to be good. It has to be, you know, we have to be doing the right things there because otherwise that comes back to me personally and everything I'm attached to, right? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I take that really seriously now and I really understand the power of that. Um, and, you know, I mean, m- the following I have is very, very authentic. I'm super lucky because I'm like yeah. just a pretty straight up person yeah. and they trust me from what I gather and I don't want to abuse that either, mm-hmm. right? So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm always very mindful and my role in the business is always making sure that the business comes back to our like authenticity our authenticity back to our mission like what is that and I am that like I make sure that that brand stays aligned um with something that I'm sort of proud of because mm. it doesn't sit well mm. otherwise right like yeah. long term yeah no mm. no no and and that's and that's the thing is it's just interesting because you think that that would be ABC for most businesses but it's actually not I think most people would turn a buck um you know the, the, there's a lack of integrity and authenticity you know, specifically in our industry, we see it a lot. Mm. Rip off an idea, re- repackage it. Oh, look what we've just created. It's like, that's not an original idea. You've got no investment and soul into your product. You're just seeing how you can actually just take what somebody else has done and then just try and jam it down someone's throat and make some money. Um, you know, same thing with regards to anything that you believe in, that you do. That level of authenticity is difficult because a lot of people are faking it, if you, if you know. But mm-hmm. I think they come undone in the end. Mm. Um but yeah, you know, I understand there's a great responsibility there because at the end of the day, this is a part of the DNA of who you are. Mm-hmm. So it's an extension of your actual personality. Uh, and, and, you know, again, if you, like like I do, you, you want to help people. You want to do the best that you can for other people. Mm-hmm. And that's why you would jump in your car as a world-class athlete and drive for however long to give somebody a pair of sunglasses but doesn't it make you feel good though when you even help just the one person? Mm. It's not about the money at that stage. No. I mean, sure, it's about the integrity of your business and I guess you could argue, well, that is, but it's also about the integrity of that one person that you just, that's why you started the business is to help one person. Right? Yeah, and like, let's be real, like everyone works a job because we need to make money, right? Sure. And whether whether you own your own business or you work just for somebody else, you don't always just go to work for the fun of it, right? Like you have to do something to make money. Everyone has to make money to, you know, keep a roof over your head and everything like that. But for me, if I don't have my authenticity, like if I'm not me and everything I'm connected to is not aligned, like I don't feel good and my days would be miserable. Like I can't function like that. So Mm -hmm. if I'm going to try and make money to keep a roof over my head Mm -hmm. and my children's head and keep food on our table, good food and to live really good days, I'm going to make it worth it because essentially I'm like, you know, I want to feel good at the end of my days. I want to make sure that I can sleep at night and everything feels good. And that's just me personally. And look, not everyone's like that and they still – they love their days. I don't know. They like can do things and, you know, do it a little bit more shallow or whatever. And that's what works for them. But like that just doesn't, it doesn't sit well for me because like I said, I'm, yeah, the only thing I have to come back to is who I am. And that's what I've always prided myself on in all that I do. Like sure on social media, I could be a totally different person and I could maybe be way more successful now. But like I, I said to Maddie, I was like, I just have this gut feeling and my gut feeling is always super strong that the most valuable thing that I will have Mm long-term and the thing that will pay off in the end is sticking to my gut and being exactly who I am. And I, I, with every cell of my body, I believe that. And it might not be right now. It might be later. It might pay off in how my child is and how she Mm -hmm. lives. I don't know, but I know everything happens for a reason. I feel like that's what I'm supposed to do. So I'll do it the right and slow way and not the same way as everyone else. And I trust that that's going to pay off. Yeah. And look, and the the sad thing with Australia, and you would have had it as an athlete as well too, is that once you start actually to get some level of success, they just come out of the woodwork and throw stones at you, especially in Australia, this tall poppy thing. I I saw Mark Boris talking about it the other day. He said, screw this Australia. Why do we keep pulling down people that are actually trying to achieve something Mm -hmm. good? Why why is this, this, this jealousy, this, this, this thing that comes out. So as you become successful as well Mm -hmm. too, then you're allowed a certain amount of success. Mm. But then if that perception of that success goes above that, and you must have experienced that as an athlete. Yeah, I said to, I actually had this conversation uh, not long ago, only in the last few weeks with Maddie. And I said, one of the realizations I had in quarantine is that there were certain times where I felt like, you know, you've kind of heard the saying where like you dim your light. Like Mm -hmm. I felt like I was dimming my light on purpose. And I remember the last time I went through this was when I was a teenager, Mm -hmm. um, like young teenager, because I was really good at sport 
and um, like I was really good at swimming and then I went to a different school that was like people that were quite different to me and I dimmed my light essentially mm-hmm. because I didn't want to stand out yeah. and I was trying to blend in, right? Yeah. And I started doing it again and I just realized that I was like, I don't want to show too much of like being too happy, being too, in my eyes, successful in that I have a good relationship yeah. and a happy, healthy child yeah. and I'm, I've am got a roof over my head that I really oh, like and I live near blessed. the beach or whatever. I'm super 100%. blessed, super, super blessed, yeah. very grateful for it. And I started and you've to be, for it, yeah, 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 yeah. I, mean, I yeah. definitely have worked for. I've, we've definitely like Matt and I have set it up like that, right? That's mm. what we prioritize. But I caught myself like being mindful of showing too much because of of being afraid of people attacking me, right? Yeah, yeah. And um, I said I said this exact thing to him. I'm like, why on earth am I afraid of showing anything that I've worked hard for or that I'm happy and enjoying my life? You know, I'm not out to, I definitely don't have bad intentions to rub it in his face and face it or anything. I'm like, I've come from nothing. I'm like, mm. everything's a bonus, you know, yeah, like, exactly. um, and I don't need much. And like what I have right now is plenty, but um, it's not about like tangible things, but you know, like it could just be something as simple as like, I'm at the beach on a Wednesday and people are like, you don't even work or do anything. You know, they haven't seen, I just train for hours <laughs> first thing in the morning and you know, they don't, they don't see yeah, any of, of that. It could yeah. be something as simple as that. Um, I, I became really mindful of. Right. And then I had a shift and I, I said to him, what I want to do and what feels right to me is to show all of this good stuff and to be a positive image on social media when there isn't any mm-hmm. and in a really nice way, not in not with any ego behind it whatsoever, but like just be the good vibes that people deserve to see because that's what I have. That's what I have going on. That's what I have to offer. So why on earth am I hiding that? Why should I... You know, like people got into this like fake world of like, oh, I'll show that I have cellular too or like just as random Mm -hmm. stuff like trying to act like they're being the real person to like bring themselves down to a real place. Of course we do. Don't Mm -hmm. like, don't harp on about it. It's fine. We all do. We're all humans. But what I want to show you and what I want to emphasize in my life, and it's not from being false, but I want to emphasize the good. Mm -hmm. Pay attention to the good. Acknowledge it. Show it. It's like it's like a po- living every day of a positive affirmation of like when you write in a gratitude journal, you don't yeah. write everything that's bad about your life and that you wish that you had better. You write all things like I got up today. I'm stoked Absolutely. to be alive. Yeah. I got to hug my husband and my Absolutely. daughter. And, you know, so like why would I not keep showing that? Yep. And so that's where I'm at in personally and in the business. It's like let's be that positive vibe that and that, what we all really need and what we really, really want as people and show that like that is totally possible. It's more than acceptable. It's how it totally Mm. should be and that it's okay and you don't have to hide that and like kind of go do it and just live it. And so my job now is to like live it, like live it, do those things and then, yeah, that's what makes me feel good. So now we're trying to do that in the business, Mm. which is super fun and now my job's fun. It is. I forget forget that you'll know it. Um, but there's a poem and I forget and it says, um, you know, by, by, by shining our light, it actually unconsciously gives permission for other people to do the same. In other words, 100%. living your best life. And I appreciate this virtual signaling. Mm-hmm. I appreciate this untruistic motives that some people may do it, you know, fake it till you make it sort of stuff. I hate that saying, by the way. Yeah. Um, just be real. Yeah. I mean, own, own your faults, but try to do what you possibly can yeah. and know that they're going to be, the critics that come out and just have a swipe at you because they're miserable bastards yeah. and they just want to pull you down because misery loves company. Yeah. They don't build, they don't achieve anything. They feel felt instead of actually just being inspired, they become nasty, mm-hmm. but you just, you can't worry about that. No. You know? And and this is the thing as well too. I actually mm-hmm. with Brooklyn and I came in yesterday feeling really down. And so then I said, bugger it. Let's put on, um, you know, Mr. Blue Sky from, um, uh, yeah, Guardians of the Galaxy, you know, the little thing where he's dancing at yeah, the beginning. Yeah. You know? And so we just laughed and just joked and played some happy music for like, you know, half an hour before we did the podcast because otherwise it would have been a real down podcast. And by doing that as well too, you know, focusing, acknowledging obviously the problems that we face. I mean, not sticking your head in the sand and being mm-hmm. stupid, but you're right. We've got one life. We've got one day. You know, worry is a useless emotion. Um, because you're going to pay for something twice potentially or even once unnecessarily, if that makes sense, yeah. you know, because of these bad emotions and, you know, like even the Bible says, focus on what is good, what is noble, what is righteous, what is, what is, 
what is noteworthy, what is good. You know, that's what we, well, as opposed yeah. to constantly just be focused on, you know, evil and horrible things and nastiness because then that taints and permeates who you are. Yeah. And you stop being who you were created to be, which is joy and, and, and life. Well, and then it, you've got nothing to offer anyone either, right? Who like, wants misery? You don't know. And Maddie's so good. Like I'm a, na- I'm a natural stressor right yeah. worse since being a mom you just stress about everything sure. but um he says to me he's like he just said one day he goes just don't stress until you need to yeah. you can stress yeah. just wait until you need to so like when it's happened and it's going down and you need to like stress and make a decision that's what stress is for don't stress now because there's nothing it's doing right now mm. i'm like oh it's so clear i'm like yeah. so you'll let me stress when the time's right so start pushing it and then before you know it you're like oh i never really got to the time it's where i needed stressful. it it just yeah. kind of sorted out didn't it you know, so, and it's so funny. Like we had, we put this, <laughs> so true. we mm. put this, um, we put a pool in recently, right? Like yeah. super fun. We had the guys dropping it off and there's this fella who was driving the truck with the pool on the back of it. And he comes in and he was just this like zero cares, bubbly dude, have a chat, so good. And I was like, I said to Maddie, I've talked about him ever since. He's probably sick of it. But I was like, he really just like picked up my day. And we do, I get the same thing. Like watching the news and everything. You have the days where all of a sudden yeah. you're just, it just like, you, yeah. it's just, just consumes you. And I was like, man, he made me feel really good. And he didn't do anything in particular. He was just like, it was really confident in himself. And he was just chatty and good. This is the dude that's just dropping off the pool. Mm-hmm. And they're like, yeah, he raises his kids on his own. He's driven all the way, like all day to drop this thing off to us like no worries like uh-huh. dropped off yeah come have a little helping out have a chat then goes all right guys have a great day i'm like he made me feel like i soaked that up so much mm-hmm. and needed that so much mm-hmm. and then i was like man i want people to say that about me yeah you know mm-hmm. i was like i want i want people to like be around me and then go like i feel good not like oh man she's so cranky or judgy or yeah. moody draining. or draining mm-hmm. you know yeah. like i don't want to drain people that doesn't uh, feel good mm-hmm. You know, like <laughs> actually, there's this really, there's this really cool um, comedy um, in the shadows. I think it is. It's um, a, a story about vampires. It's the guy from Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, the 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 the, uh, the Jojo Rabbit. 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 Yeah, I love Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, and, 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 and <laughs> just like, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm getting yeah. a theme here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, no, 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 he did Thor Ragnarok three. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, he's the the New Zealand director. I forget his name. Anyway, he he's awesome in this. And uh, like they've got this vampire, and it goes, oh, this is a special kind of vampire. They sit in rooms and they just suck people's energy, and you can't even tell. And like you go in, and there's two people there. They're on the couch, and they're literally he's sucked all their energy out of them. Yeah, you don't want to be it's those nice. sorts of people, right? Because they're right. everywhere. But no, I, I I I totally agree with you. I I a while ago. And I said, I would love to try and live my life like Forrest Gump because yeah. Forrest, nothing ever really got him down, right? You know, remember when the storm's coming and he's in the boat and, you know. And ca- he rarely said no. Yeah. Mm. Right? She's yeah. like, yeah, I'll give it a try. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Let's do yeah. It. yeah. And he was just very phlegmatic. You know, he was playing ping pong and he became world champion. And then they went, right, you discharged and he put it down. And then that was it, right? Yeah. He then moved on to the next section of life without looking back, without yeah. lament, without despair. Mm. You know, he was just phlegmatic. And and I know that that's very simplistic, but mm. the reason why that movie was so popular is because he was so endearing. Yeah. Right? He was just genuine. He was kind. He was loving. He wasn't, and he he wasn't a stress bucket and bringing this energy with him. Yeah. And that's really, really hard because, you know, again, family, life, business, money, stress, mm. health, you know, all these things can grab you down. But if you gravitate and focus on those things that you're grateful for, as you say, you've got a gratitude journal. Yeah. I've heard that. I've heard other people have happy rocks and all the rest of it. Um, I get that because these emotions are what actually brings life as opposed to the emotions that bring death. Yeah. So choose one, right? Yeah, right. yeah. I mean, you like, you know, that that old saying that's like, you are the sum of the five mm. closest people to you or whatever yeah. it is. Like, so you are, and then, you know, it's sort of evolved into, I've heard like several people on like podcasts and books and things like talking about, no, it's about like, it's about what you read, what you listen to, what you watch, like what mm. you're consuming becomes who you are, sure. what you say becomes who you are. Yeah. And um, I've been listening to this book and, you know, they're talking about like, your brain, how your mind works and yeah. the pathways of like, you know, say people who have had trauma and then how they kind of end up being and how you have to rewire that. Yeah. And it's 
I mean, I love listening to the science of it because it becomes very practical in my eyes. Totally. If, if it's scientifically like, oh, it's like this and then you can make it like this. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. I'll just like rewire it this way then. Mm-hmm, and, mm-hmm. and that's where like the gratitude journal for me was like a practice of just consciously, constantly reminding myself every day of mm-hmm. all the good things, putting it down. I got that for traveling because I knew I was going to be hard leaving my daughter and I wrote in it every day and all of that so that I knew. And then you start to think like that. Mm-hmm. Then you start to feel like that and then you start to act like that and then you start to put that on other people. Mm-hmm. And rather than being like, oh, woe is me because it's really easy to get lost in, you know, mm-hmm. want more, need Pity more, or whatever, like yeah. everything. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and so that's where like I, I do truly like see the value in doing that but it's, it's practice right like yeah. it's not you know it's definitely not an easy thing I, I said to Maddie yesterday I was like I tell you what it's so much easier to change your diet you know to change healthy habits you know you mm-hmm. can do that little stuff small small bits at a time you know you can drink more water for the first week and then you know cut some sugar out the next week I'm like that's easy rewiring your brain mm-hmm. to like be a more positive and kind and generous and grateful person yeah. especially like if you haven't always been like that or maybe you've had trauma mm-hmm. or something like that through your childhood that is hard yeah. and that is like constant effort and constant practice but yeah. I I think it pays off and no, it does. I mean like you said before linking being an athlete to a business is like being an athlete is the best thing I've ever done in my life for the simple fact that it created a level of like resiliency and an understanding that I just I think a lot of people don't even get mm. to experience. You know, yeah, like yeah. I said, you show up and fail way more times than you succeed, mm-hmm. you know, so over mm-hmm. and over and over again. But for some reason you have to keep showing up anyway. Mm-hmm. You have to learn from it. And mm-hmm. then you, even after your entire career, like, you're probably the only one person can be the best at a time. Yeah. Only one in the entire world. Mm-hmm. So you know that and you still got to do it anyway and keep trying and keep learning and mm-hmm. that changes year to year. And then once you kind of like learn to be like that, like going then into business, I took my business partner who's very much an entrepreneur. That's his space. He's like, oh, whenever you talk about like how you do business, I talk about it from an athlete's point of view. I go, when I train, it's like this. And so that's what I'm going to do like now in the business. And he's like, wow, there's so much alike. And when you said that, I'm like, it's so funny because he goes, because I always say, look, I'm new. I don't know how to do this business side of things. And then he's like, oh, but you've kind of already done it all before um, in how it plays out. And it just is like different businesses, different things. You learn about your product and all of those kind of things. Ultimately, right. And technology and whatever. But you want to win, right? Mm. Yeah. You'll find a way to win. Yeah. So, so, so if you're following a roadmap and that's not working for you, like you're doing a certain time of training or what have you, and you're going, I'm not going to get to where I need to go. I can be better. That's yep. that that drive and that that result yep. mindset, right? And that's how it is in business. You've got to you've got to adapt. You can't mm-hmm. just oh well, we do business by the numbers and this is how we do it. And we yeah. end up here. This I mean, we've always done it. We've got to yeah. keep doing it that way. Le- yeah. Legacy thinking and all that oh, yeah. sort of stuff, which we talk about a lot here, right? Mm-hmm. But but it's true in terms of happiness and focus and all the rest of it. It's also comparison and comparing yourself to where other people are and the jealousy that comes in. Mm -hmm. I I say to a lot of people and especially younger people as well too, you know, you're unhappy with your life because you're surrounded by social media with things that aren't real and people are telling you that your life is actually not as good Mm -hmm. as, as, and your life is terrible and uh, woe is you and, you know, the sky's falling and the climate's about to implode and you're all about to die, right? We're just stressed out all the time. Whereas 105 years ago, we had 15, 16 year olds fixing bayonets, charging over the top of mounds at machine guns and this for certain death. I mean, and you look at the perceived you know, stress of where we are to, to where we are really today. Mm -hmm. I mean, the people, you know, even some of the poorest people in the West, I mean, forget the the third world, but in the West and in Australia, US and all the rest of it, they live better than Kings of a thousand years ago. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at the, the, the cars, the TVs, the entertainment. I mean, you know, the problem is, is that we're so fixated on what we don't have mm. that we actually forget to be thankful for what we do have, you know, know. and like this, this guy that's driving this, this, uh, you know, truck and delivering. Yeah. Mm. How awesome is that? Because yeah. at the end of the day, you've got one li- life to live. Yeah. You've got 80 years, whatever it is. Every day is a gift. If he, if he's just loving life and enjoying it, like yeah. yesterday yeah. morning, when he just said, bugger it, we're going to put on Mr. Blue Sky and just laugh and dance yeah. and tell some jokes. And I'm in the moment enjoying it as opposed to all the other, cra- you're just 
filter that out and you just yep. l- enjoy life, right? Yeah. And then unconsciously, all of us were laughing by the end of it, weren't we? So I'm talking to Brooklyn for those yeah. that can't see <laughs> yeah. down the yeah. end here. So, yeah, and, and that's how life should be. One yeah. day at a time, not yeah. worrying about tomorrow, just enjoying it for what we have and helping others as well too to, yeah. you know, where we possibly can. So Yeah, I mean, like we say it all the time, like with our daughter, I'm like, we're better off than our parents were by far. I'm like, it's so funny. Like we walk around a house, it's like a four bed, three bath house, you know, we're doing all right. And I'm like, Remember when everyone had a three bed house with one bathroom yep. that everyone shared, yep. one tiny living room? Like our house was yep. tiny. I'm like, yep. Maddie grew up, he had two other siblings, and they're in a little house out mm. in the bush. There was nothing going on. And I was like, now we like have to take the kids out all the time. They got to do all these different things. I'm like, we always talk about how do we kind of fake it a little bit for Scotty because we are so grateful that we grew up like that. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, we, you really don't know, like, we were good. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like we we're good. Yeah. He's good. He's got fond memories. Life was good mm. with basics, you know, basics. So we're not even like, okay, you maybe played one sport. You know, I think about all the yeah. things that, that we have access to give oh, to our children now. And I'm like, I just kind of don't want to because, mm. you know, you don't want, I don't want her to kind of miss out on what we had because mm. we're so like grateful and appreciative totally. for you know, anything pretty much. Like we're yeah. pretty content with very little yeah. and everything, like I said, everything is a so bonus. So, yeah. so like uh, to, to us, our greatest value is our time. So if we can yes. work, we work. Like Matt is a firefighter and he wants to be a firefighter so that he can be home with our children. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, awesome. he gets, he has a better quality of life because his dad had to work really hard away all the time, yep. you know? And so we work and set things up and have it in a way so that we can have better quality time, mm-hmm. educating our kids, being with each other, right? As a couple, like actually yeah. getting to spend time with each other and basically go to the beach, like do those things. Yeah. And that's where the value comes in is like maintaining time and being able to sit down. But like you're not even allowed to do that anymore. Mm. You know, like we like feel know. bad if we're not on the hustle, hustle, hustle. Yeah. So, so then I guess you've got to work out a way. What, okay, what can you do? So yeah. don't focus on what you can't. Focus on what yeah. you can, right? So if we can't do that, well, then how do we, you know, have a little pet and cat in the backyard or, yeah. or what can we do? I mean, I, I'm mm-hmm. thinking of, again, as well, too, for our listeners and our friends down in, in Melbourne and Sydney, I am s- upset with you. I mean, I know mm-hmm. your sister's down there as well, too, as a nurse, right? Mm. And I mean, yeah, I, and I know it's hard and maybe almost patro- you know, patronizing to say, oh, well, you know, just go with it. Yeah, you, you should be upset with your government, but totally. you need to find, you need to find things that you can celebrate little wins little areas little getaways little little opportunities for your to own refresh, sake and not, anyone, yeah. not exactly. anyone else's exactly. for your own sake yeah. it's like yeah. it's super easy to say and it's certainly oh. easier to say not being in it mm. um and i like at a minor super mild taste like say being in quarantine right just that it's uncomfortable it's uncomfortable yeah, yeah and i said to two weeks but i said to maddie i'm like i'm in this room that's like, yeah, I can complain about the air conditioning, but I'm also in this room with air conditioning where food mm. arrives, I have access to food, water, I can have a shower every day. Yeah. I've got a bed with pillows. Yeah, like exactly. I'm locked away. I'm like, and it's crappy. The experience I acknowledge is crappy, mm-hmm. but I'm like trying to milk and trying to find any good little part of it. I'm like, oh, I get to sit down. I haven't sat down in like properly in two years since I had my child, you know, like well, be quiet, watch a, have this whole watch, bed to myself. Yeah, watch a movie yeah, I watched when right. I was 18, you yeah. know, like little well, things. But And don't but, let them take any more. I mean, like I think of the people mm. down in Melbourne, for example, as well too. They've taken away so much of your joy, your freedoms, your businesses. I mean, people are going broke. I mean, there's mental health. Don't let them take your life as well too. Mm-hmm. Like, And I'm, what I mean by that is that, Oh, and I and I really want to emphasize this point. I I really feel for the people down in Melbourne. I really feel the most locked down country now or area in the world, even more than um, uh, Buenos Aires, I think, uh, like yeah. Argentina, right? Which is just crazy. Right? And you're helpless too, right? Like, yeah. I'm 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 definitely like a closet empath. Um, and yeah, I, me too. I mm. feel it. I'm like a sponge, and I take it in. Anyone's like kind of emotion, which is why I really value like value high vibe people around me because I will take that on yeah. just as much as I'll take on the down stuff. So, yeah, yeah. Um, and if I get consumed by it too much, I just feel so helpless and yeah. just, I it's, it, it's nothing more than just totally saddening. Like it's nothing other than just, it's just sad. It's just really sad. And you feel really helpless for people, just yeah. like real people. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I like kind of selfish, I, 
I had to selfishly remove myself from being exposed yeah. to certain mm. things, especially 100%. on social media. No, one hundred percent. For the pres- for my preservation and and for how I show up in my house for my family, but then <coughs> like. I'll do other things where I'm trying to contribute, like say for instance, like where I'm purchasing things for my home or where I'm buying things from with like small businesses down there. Um, Little things like that, trying to do whatever I can kind of from a distance and and, and other things. But um, yeah, I, I just hope that, I mean, a lot of people don't have the strength to kind of keep going too much longer. And I just hope that somehow they can find it deeper deeper where they haven't had to access it before and and just hold on a little bit longer and that the world gets back to some level of normality normality soon um you know i didn't get and and this is one thing i said to maddie i was like i didn't get to compete and it was crappy you know yeah i kind of had that taken away because i got sick but i'm like I still got I still got to come home. That's why I like I didn't dwell on it for too long because I was like, yeah, it's crappy. It's not ideal. I'm an athlete and that's what I do. But I got to come home and I'm back with my family. My family is safe. We're okay. And that's like what's most important. Like we can still eat and drink mm-hmm. and survive and be with each other. So um yeah, it's not it was never worth me entertaining too much for too long when it could Definitely. be a lot worse. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and I think that, that, I mean, it's funny, we're talking about mindset and happiness and you controlling what you can. One of those things on social media as well too. And I, I, I'm terrible on social media because I just don't like it because I, I like little bits of it and I enjoy it. My sister sends me some funny stuff and I post some red dwarf stuff from time to time. It's just stuff that is light and makes me laugh. I mean, cat videos probably is probably what I'm, yeah, I'm like 10 years behind, right? But, no, seriously, but, but, <laughs> but w- why I don't like it is because what ends up happening is you get drawn into arguments and, and keyboard warriors and into strife and disagreement a lot of the time. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, well, I just don't need that. <laughs> I'd rather go spend time with my boys or, or, or with Tony yeah. rather than argue with somebody I don't really know. I'll probably never really connect with. I mean, and, and I think for the people that um, our customers and people that believe in our philosophy, we connect through our podcast, we connect through our social media and our team. Um, and I find that works for me but mm-hmm. because I just don't want to get dragged into – it's funny, right? You get 10 compliments yeah. and one criticism. Oh, yeah, you remember. You yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we all have triggers, right? And right. that's what starts half of it, mm-hmm. you know, well, pretty much every time is like every person has their triggers. Mm. I try and be when when I get something nasty, which is honestly pretty rare. I'm pretty lucky. Um, but I try and be compassionate to the fact that somebody may have a trigger yeah. that I don't understand yeah. and they're being nasty. I try and be really compassionate towards that person sure. and take a deep breath and go, you know, they're, they're triggered. They're probably struggling. Um, you know, there's a, they're cranky and that doesn't feel nice. So don't and I – I try and train that into myself all the time. And then every now and again, I'm a human too and I have triggers. So like someone might say something that'll trigger me and then I get roped in and then it goes absolutely nowhere other than kind of getting me riled up and drafting messages that I don't actually send (laughs) or comments that I don't actually send, you know, and then wait 24 hours. Yeah. 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 And then get cranky and snap (laughs) and, and then everyone in my, the violence, right? yeah. Yeah. And then everyone in my house feels it and we got nowhere and, you know, it's like they they probably don't want to even hear what I had to say or whatever, yeah. and I kind of take my time and and talk back on occasion now within my community and do it in a really nice way, and usually have people like respectfully be like, "Cool, I get it. Like I understand yes. your side. Let's be yes. different. Cool, no yeah, worries. You know, there's I a way to that. do it, but yeah. that For takes sure. and and that constructive conversation is so valuable, oh. but it's hard. It's really hard, right? It can get out of hand, and not everyone is like. I mean, like uh, we always talk about at home, like I work on myself so hard. Every day I'm working on myself to try and be a better person mm-hmm. like in every way. And I'm like, not everyone's doing that. No. So I'm like, I can show up and be like, I'm ready to show up in this conversation and be good and be constructive. But then if the other person's not ready to meet me there, then it's just going to go nowhere. So it's not worth it, right? Mm-hmm. So, it's, it's, so, so, it's so true. I just put that energy somewhere else. And and, and, and sometimes it just wouldn't the, the, the the twain will never meet if they never the twain should meet. It's like again, you know, and I remember this as a as a cartoon that's been shown. You, you've got a chimpanzee and you've got a fish, right? Both awesome, both really good at what they do. And then you go, right, um, let's climb this tree. <laughs> uh, okay, the monkey, it, no problem. The fish is like what you know, and, and this is the problem as well too. Is if you're not even on the same level, if you can't even comprehend 
it's just you're just not going to be able to explain you know and and that to me i guess i think so strangely like bizarre mm. tony and i were just saying the other day she goes thank god i found you because even though we're, we're quite different we still have a very center nucleus almost shared brain mm. um and I find it really hard to articulate my deep thoughts to people as well too. And so I just kind of given up yeah. a lot of the time because it's just it's it's just never it's never going to meld if that makes sense. So mm. I don't want to, yeah, cast up pearls before swine if that may. And I don't mean that in a negative way. I just like there's no point in me sometimes trying to contribute to conversations because people are just not going to understand where I'm coming from. No, well, and some you know? people have to be ready to hear it too, right? Like yeah. not everyone is sort of like ready and wants to hear it like, Matty, my hubby's like, he's super, like he's, he analyzes things. He's very logical. He's very level. It takes all of the information in from everywhere and he processes it and then comes up with his best thing and he does that. And then I'm like, not, I'm like all feels and emotions and yeah, do right. this and that. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so yeah. like, and, and so, he, but he's really good to talk to because he can, he can step outside of himself yeah. and his emotions. Yeah. And he's taught me that too. Like I'm a lot better at that now, but he can step outside of it. And so we can get into that constructive conversation. But then I have that and then I'm like, it's not going to be like this with every single person. Do you know what I mean? Like not everyone yeah. has that ability to step outside themselves and their emotions and what they have like feeling right there and analyze all of the views and see where it's at and be really level. Like it, there's only certain people that can kind of do that and that's why it's just not, it's not always worth it. Where does yeah. it go to? No, like true. I've been thinking lately, I'm like, what's my, true. what's my purpose in saying this? What am I hoping to achieve? Because you know when people say like, they'll say something you see in comments, like someone will say something and they're like, what do you hope to achieve? And I really thought about it and I'm like, well, when I say something, what do I hope to achieve? Mm. You know, am I genuinely mm. like, do, am I genuinely concerned and I want them to side with me? no, that's not really that important. As long as I'm doing me, I don't really care. Yeah. Well, do I want to help them? Is Are they actually going to listen? No, I'm like, oh, cool. Well, I'm, I'm not really going to achieve anything. So what's the point? <laughs> like there's no, there's no purpose here, a, a, right? A business so friend of mine said the same thing and I use it with our team a little bit as well too. Like uh, SW, SW, SWN. Some will, some won't. So what next, right? It's kind of you've got to get to that point, not where it's um, screw you. Because, I mean, that's the answer no, as well no, no, too. No, it's no. just like the – we're on a different path. Yeah. You know, it's not going to, it's not going to gel. It's not going to work, you know, because you sort of create your posse, your team, mm -hmm. your gang, your family. And I'm really, we're really blessed to have a, a really great team here that get on so well. Like, you know, all of us really get on mm -hmm. well. I mean, Aaron, who's, who's come on Brooklyn, you know, you've been here forever, but like mm -hmm. we, we, we do, I mean, Elsa and I and Tony, I mean, Elsa, Elsa's practically Tony and I's, you know, first daughter, right? <laughs> but, but we've got like this, this amazing chemistry, mm. camaraderie, even though we're very different and we do things in a different way, there's still that center nucleus, which is so awesome, which is why I love coming into work, right? Um, but for people that don't fit, it's like I'm not going to I'm not going to waste the energy, the effort, the angst trying to put a square peg into a round hole. Does yeah. that make sense? So yeah. I don't want to come off sounding like I'm, I'm um, elitist or no, obtuse or anything. No, right? but think I about it. Like say sometimes, sometimes yeah. like say when yeah. you're younger. Oh, you and Tony are very similar yeah. like that. It's just like she's very cut and dry. Eh, no, you don't fit. Um, you know, nice knowing you see you, thanks. Yeah. And then there's no anger. It's well, just like. Whereas, no, it's just like we're on different paths, yeah. like yeah. you said. And it's it's an easy split for me. I've always had my friends that are close to me always to say like, how do you just distance yeah. yourself from somebody like that I'm like well if you're on a different path like and usually nine times out of ten you both think the same way so it's very amicable because yeah. like you're both Rather on the same the yeah you're both like oh yeah I wasn't really and, on and that for path people anyway. that can't for people that are too empathetic or for people that care too much about what other people think and all the rest of it to where you got these toxic relationships it's like a dog going back to its vomit right just hmm. leave it alone <laughs> I know that's a horrible <laughs> saying that's a saying that's right same. have you heard that saying no You've I never love heard it. it. I'm going to yeah. steal it. Uh, yeah, it's out of the Bible. But it's I mean, so like, it's these funny. things. It's like you're returning to something that is no good for you, that is complete rubbish, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. have you ever seen a dog go back to its vomit? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Right. yeah. So yeah, then anyway. my dogs are crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so, I mean, it. but it's just a great word picture. And this is the problem is a lot of people don't know when to sever that link yes, and go. that's true. No, no disrespect, no harm to you, but I'm going this way. Yeah, well, think um, about like when you're young and you're like dating people, right? And you might meet someone, you might date them, and you'd be like, oh, there's like nothing wrong with them. Like, they're okay. Like, you know, but like it's not there, right? You know, yeah. sometimes you just be like, oh, we're not, I don't feel like we like really want to date. Be like, you're not a bad person. You're pretty yeah. nice. Yeah. Like, yeah. that's cool. But yeah. like, we're just different. Like, yeah. that's yeah. just how it is. And you'll get that same thing in like business and everything. Yeah. Like, you know, as an athlete, you might have like companies that be like, we want to sponsor you, want to do whatever. And I'm like, 
oh man, what you do is really cool, but like, it's not really me. Yep. You know, yeah. I'm not really down with that, like, that setup <laughs> right now. It doesn't really fit in with me. Like, yeah. but like, keep crushing, you know, thank yeah. you. Yeah. You know, yeah. like, it doesn't have to be, yeah, exactly. yeah it doesn't, Horrible, it doesn't have to be weird. Nasty. No, no. Yeah, it doesn't have to That's be weird. It. Don't be weird. Yeah. No, I, think, <laughs> I, think, I think if people sp- spoke more clearly, I think, you know, obviously we'd get on, but we do tip down around things and sort of yeah. make things a bit worse from time to time. Mm-hmm. Uh, Communication you know. is like the single hardest thing for people. Like, we, talk about that all the time like communication is everything like mm-hmm. take the time to learn how to do it mm-hmm. in every it's aspect like everything. in your relationship yeah. in your business in whatever and then if you like because you know say you're really uncomfortable and you really don't want to do something it can get a lot worse or you can learn to say I'm really uncomfortable and I don't want to do it and then at least the person then knows yeah you know what you're dealing with and you're like okay cool like if someone straight up said to me like I just don't really like you whatever I'd be like oh that hurts, but like, okay. Yeah. Like, I don't really have anything okay. to say yeah. back. Like, is there yes. anything I can do about it? Like, no, all right. You know, it just is what it is. Like, we're people, but at least if someone says it, I mean, I just, I value honesty, like, to be yeah. honest. Like, that's my thing. But yeah, I would much rather someone just say it than be weird or treat me strange for like a really long period of time. Mm-hmm. Like, so when I first met Tony, yeah. like, I saw it and I'm like, I've said to my friends, I said, you know what? She doesn't like me for who I am. I can change. <laughs> 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 There's some people I want to change it. for. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no, right, no, right. So With your reason. Guess. Perfect, right? No. Like, we're no, not perfect. No, but, no, no, no. Yeah. But yeah, absolutely. I, I totally get what you're saying. Uh, I was just thinking as well before, do you know one of the most um, triggering words that are being used right now as well too? Is trigger. <laughs> did, you, did you know that? <laughs> really? They're actually saying that it's like they're going to take away all of our lexicon. We're going to have nothing left to say except yeah. grunt at one another. Do you Ooh. know what I did? <laughs> this is a full hack. So I – didn't want my like social media page to be a platform of anyone. Like, people get in wars, right? It doesn't even oh. be about you. They get in <laughs> yeah. wars with each other. I I'm like, whoa, whoa, don't bring that in my s- house. Whoa. Like this is this is my space. Yeah. And I want it to be like all good. Level. So you can go into your privacy settings and you can block certain words from being able to be no. commented on your page. Really? So yeah. I went in and I just went to town, <laughs> typed in any like controversial, nasty words, yeah. anything at all. So if someone tries to comment it, their comment literally won't submit. It wow. will not work. And I'm like, I don't want your war about or like your political yeah. agenda yeah, yeah. being used. I don't want you using my platform that like I've built and that I've worked really hard for and tried to keep true to me. Don't you use that as your war zone? Oh, like, no. no way. I wouldn't let you do it in my house. Like, you're not going to do it here. Yeah. yeah. And I did that and it was the best thing I've done because awesome. I'm like, now it just is like, you can comment and space. if you. Yeah. want to know what weight I used for that workout or like what the recipe was for that dinner I made or whatever random stuff I posted, like all mm-hmm. the good stuff. Mm-hmm. And cool. Like, well, that's cool. That's how we keep it positive. And they're like, yeah. you know what? If I, if my comment like wasn't working because I was like being a bit of an idiot, like if I was being hostile, yeah. it'd probably pull me up, right? Yeah, like, yeah. Oh man, I'm being hostile. I just yeah. got blocked yeah. for being hostile. Like, <laughs> yeah, you yeah. know, like it shut me down. It didn't want my hostility. No. Like you look at yourself. Yeah. I hope. Yeah, well, I, I actually, I zombie. actually, I actually <laughs> yeah. went onto your page the other day and and said, "Hey, let's play um, five hundred with all the Trump cards. I'm biting, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm biting my time, and it didn't come up. So, so yeah, yeah, well, there you go. Now then I know, now why, we right? know why. Yeah, that's so good. That's so good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, anyway, that was my that was my little block. That's hack. really smart. Yeah, yeah I like it. I mean, was. again, there's so much drama. You just don't want to get involved if you don't have to, right? So just just leave it. No. Just just sail sail on through. Yeah. Um, also, what else do we need to cover? We've covered a lot. I mean, we've strayed <laughs> There's a lot. So much in there. There's a lot. Um, there of, is But a it's question. always fun talking to you. Tenders are great. Yeah. There's a question that we've started asking everyone, which oh, yeah. is a really fun question that Brooklyn came up with. And it's what's one question that you wish you got asked more? That's so hard. I didn't it's, even it's pre-prep deep, you on right? I mean, it's so. she's doing <laughs> like psychology courses or something. She's trying to get in their brain. Yeah. Like that I got asked more like just, just anywhere. Anything, like in whether it's yeah. to do with the sport, you you as a person. Yeah. I, I think uh, I, I get asked, you know, are you single? That's what yeah. I get asked all the time. Yeah. yeah. No, that's the Money. one in wish you got asked all the time. <laughs> yeah, that's right. No. No, Tony, that's not true. Joking. I think um I don't know how to necessarily phrase it, but I think like a valuable question that I think would be that would go so far as like does that make you happy or what What would make you happy, right? Like mm. ask you like a question like and that comes back to everything because I feel like it doesn't. So we haven't – where I'm going with that is we have someone new working and active for us and she's amazing 
Thanks for Tima. We call her Fats. And um, Fatima. Yeah, Fatima. Yeah. Everyone, everyone, like we call her Fats or Fatty, and everyone's like, "Oh, that's so rude." Yeah, I'm like, "No, no, it's her nickname." Yeah. Um, <laughs> but she's awesome. She's like just overhauling everything, and she kind of like half bosses me around, but totally respects and values like who I am within the business, and that I have other stuff going on. And she's always like, "Okay, like, what you know, like, what's your vision? How does this like?" She's my executor of like my vision and my like the brand right Mm -hmm. and she's always like checking in with like what makes me happy and feels happy might not be the right word but like what's aligned is probably Mm -hmm. like what like is this aligned are you is this Mm -hmm. aligned with you maybe and then um or what what aligns with you like who are you type thing and then we she always comes back to that in every decision we make for the business Mm -hmm. always and it pays off it just always pays off and I feel like people don't ask people enough like is this aligned Mm -hmm. you know like or what aligns it's kind of like there's a be different pieces to the question maybe, but mm-hmm. um, and then give people the opportunity or like to share like who they really are, like what they really value, what they think would actually like be really good. You know, you get asked the most like shallow, like random questions, but no one really kind of like checks in with like is that who you are, is mm-hmm. that what you like, is that line, how does that hold value in yeah. whatever you're doing? It's kind of deep, deep yeah, question. Yeah, I really like that one. Though. That's really good because I mean, you get it's, asked probably the same questions all the time, right? Yeah, like, what do you eat like, in a day? What do you like? What's your favorite workout? Like, yeah, <laughs> like super, like just athletic base mm. and stuff like that. And but it's funny. I think um, when everyone asks me those like kind of more shallow questions about competition. Mm they never really get a really good true reflection or a good answer of why I do what I do, like who I am, like why I do it. Do you know what I mean? Like, and, you know, what I do is a lot more from like a personal drive of like growth. Like that's just who I am. I don't know. It's just like my brain is just like constant like growth and evolution and find new ways to be good and give and like that that's just who I am in everything and even in as a, as an athlete it's so much more than working out mm-hmm. it's so much more than than anything it's like how that goes into my life and it would it would probably tell a lot uh, a greater story and probably help people more and answer their question a lot more than the basic stuff is like you know what do you eat it's like why mm-hmm. it's like more of a why asking people their why mm-hmm. mm. Like you said, training is the easy part. Training is 100% the easy part. Like it's hard, but for a second, sure, yeah. it hurts while it hurts and then it doesn't hurt, mm. you know. So and it's then like, you get better. And then, yeah, and then you get better and then you can do more before it hurts and mm. then it stops hurting. Like you stop and you're fine, mm. you know, whereas, yeah, a lot of other things kind of drag out a lot worse. Like then it's pretty fun and you get mm. fit, which is fun. You know, look fit, that's fun. You know, yeah. all those things, pretty good. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. A lot of benefits. It's like all the other stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. No, I like that. That was good. I don't know if people had like way simpler like questions. What's an no. example? What's an example? It always, yeah. No. It does stump everyone. Because it's very… That you it's wish a, you got it's, asked. It's very, yeah, metaphysical. I'll probably drive away and think of something like way better. Oh, but no. Like, I feel the like first thing really in my brain one. is like, yeah, as in, in, a, in a general sense, if people mm. asked a little bit more like, like why? Like what's they get? We get better results. Yeah. Mm. Right. Yeah. All right. Three other questions we mm. like to ask every guest. Yeah. Favorite movie. This tells a lot about somebody. I know it does. Do you want to know Jeff's favorite movie? I'm pretty well, sure we I'm, say I'm, it I'm on pretty, every. I'm, what is it? I don't know. <laughs> just why? I'm just thought you'd love to. What is it? Galaxy. One? <laughs> no. Yeah, Evil Dead Three would have to be up there with I one of my all-time favorite films. I know Mine's you Harry have to Potter. watch it. It is hilarious mm. because I love just quirky humor. Do you know what I can't stand? Mm. I can't stand movies where you know what's going to happen next. And mm. so many movies today, it's just like, yeah, I saw that coming. Oh, that's not a surprise. Mm. After you watch it a week later, it's like, eh, so whatever. Whereas if you see something that really makes you laugh, or is really, I mean. The other one is Inception. Love that film as well too. Really deep, really mm. quirky. Yeah. You know, something that makes you think. Yeah. So you either really I, quirky purple cow or I'm yeah. like come on, give it to I'm me. totally like stupid movies. Yeah. But yeah. with with I like silly movies because I like the only time I really will watch TV. So I'll like if I'm watching TV, it's either a documentary where I can gain something uh-huh. or where I can totally turn my brain off yeah. and mm-hmm. feel twelve. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, just I like, like totally just dis- mm. disappear. I always say one of my favorite movies. I don't know if it's my favorite, but it's up there as Step Brothers. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, awesome! Such a good, great one. film. It's just, it's just yeah, too. Yeah. Like I'll watch that before competing yeah. because I can just Love. disappear. Will mm. Will Ferrell is just I can just so yeah. Good. 
and pretty much anything with him really to be honest oh, yeah. but yeah. um i can just get totally lost in the stupidity mm. yeah, so, you know yeah. and just I, I appreciate that. And honestly, because I'm always like working on something and take things seriously, I need that balance. Yeah, yeah. So mm-hmm. I, yeah, I kind of gravitate. Like, will Maddie will be like, you want something like serious or are we going like stupid tonight? I'm like, oh, we need something just to show <laughs> it down. Like, have you gone for Telegate to it, Teledega Nights? Have you watched that? I have watched it. It is yeah. good. It's not my favorite. It's not, it's not it doesn't up there. Hit. It's Step not Brothers. up there like yeah. Step Brothers. Mm-hmm. Um, the other one that, they did, that he did was Get Hard. Have you seen that with Kevin Hart? Yeah. Oh, like, yeah, I have seen that. Pee your pants worthy. Like, yeah, I, yeah. I laughed. I, yeah. Sherlock I'm like, Holmes? I, Did you watch Sherlock Holmes? Yes, I didn't love it. No, it didn't do well. Yeah, I don't no. think I No, I didn't love it. It, yeah. has to, it has to just have, I think the funniest ones where you can really let go is where they have like this little connection to like maybe how you grew up or yeah, like something yeah. like there's a connection to like a sibling or oh. something like that, you know, where it, it, you can Sorry. resonate with it a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, I think yeah. you need that. You do. It's like, it's why I like listening to Carl Barron. I'm like, it just, he talks, he's oh, like we were, such a We were watching him the other day. Stuff. I I'm love like, it. This is my life. You like, ask Australians, you know, like, you know, how long? Oh, not long now. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it's, how much was that? Well, it wasn't cheap. I'll yeah. tell you everything that it wasn't, right? But it wasn't. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, a, it's just so, so old funny. school Aussie. Yeah, it makes so me good. feel like comfort right yeah, yeah, like same, comfort same. of my childhood where you're like safe and don't have responsibilities yeah yeah yep. that was very good <laughs> yeah awesome. No, awesome i like that uh favorite quote <sighs> oh gosh that's so hard there's like there's this quote i literally said to matt this morning i'm reading this book called like still home like how to like be all chill and have less in your house. And oh, it's really my cool. My sister recommended that one to me. Yeah. yeah, it's really good. And um, it had this quote and it's so bizarre. This quote has appeared in like my life about four times in the last week. So Ooh. I'm like, oh, it's so weird. Mm. It's a roomy quote. I can't remember exactly how it goes, but it was like I used to be smart and wanted to change the world or something but now I'm wise and I want to change, change myself. myself. Yeah. Something like that. That's no, not I the word. That, like yeah, I said I can, it, I've said it wrong, get, yeah. because, yeah. but it's so weird yeah. because I'm in this full like, you know, I'm in this like growth phase of like post-COVID and life yeah. and trying to make things good and I'm like so there and it's literally four times it's been thrown at me in like a Ooh. week. I'm like so deep. I'm like, yeah. but I really appreciate it. I'm like, and I, it does. I think a lot more people, if they went inwards, they yeah. could well, work outwards a lot better. But right? it is. You change yourself and you do change the world. Yeah. yeah. And you change the world around you. Yeah, yeah. it's really smart. Mm. But it's, again, it's kind of like, you know, taking out the plank out of your own eye before you take the splinter out of someone else's. Yeah. You need to work on yourself to make the world a better place. Yeah, like don't show up mm. and be crappy for people. Like, yeah. Like be be good, have something to offer. Like, yeah. do you so know what I mean? And to our whole conversation, totally. Today. It is, yeah. So that's the one that's right there with me. And I literally, I opened up this book that I bought from like this little shop down the road. And I opened up this page. And I'm like, Patty, stop it. I'm like, this quote, like, just showed up again. I told him he's looking at me like I'm crazy. And I'm like, it's just not coming. It's the same book. No, I'm yeah. Just <laughs> he's like, you were reading that yeah. yesterday. You've just gone back a couple yeah. of pages. Where's your bookmark? Uh, oh. <laughs> oh gosh, no, that's too funny. Well, yeah, good one. Anything yeah, else? Yeah. Last one, best advice that you've been given and by whom? Oh my gosh, I've been given so much advice. I'm going to say Maddie's advice recently. Well, I knew it was going to be so it was gonna be, uh, that, awesome. I'm going to say it was his was the don't stress unless you, unless or until you need to. Mm. Like just let it go. Let yeah. it be and then address it. Like essentially a stress response is there for a reason once upon a time to save our lives if, you know, we're getting chased by a lion or tiger or something random, mm. not just for like everyday stuff that you're thinking up in your head. So that's been very impactful for me as someone who tries to like control the situation and navigate it mm. to just go like wait your time. It still gives me permission to stress, which I need. Don't tell me not to. Yeah. <laughs> like because that, that doesn't go anywhere yeah, yeah. either. Don't tell me what to do. <laughs> But like when it's right. Yeah. So that's been very beneficial. I feel like we should get Maddie on the show. Like I feel like he's, he's so, so wise. wise. <laughs> so wise, but so blunt. Yeah. <laughs> so, so blunt. And there's like me that like dances around this conversation for like hours and hours. And he's just like, do this. And you're like, Tony's wow. exactly the same. Yeah, yeah. you there need is, that balance, hey. Yeah. I'm verbose and she is contrite. So it sounds like Matt's the same way. Because mm-hmm. yeah. you're pretty verbose. 
which, you know, so we both talk a lot. Yeah. Mm. Which, it makes for a good podcast. It does, yeah. I mean, yeah. it makes for a bit of editing. If people yeah. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. I was going to say more But, that. <laughs> but um, better than going, how are you? Yeah, good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, good. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. But then, and then even then you've got to get him. Sometimes he's like all chat, chat, chat. And uh-huh. other times it's like minimal, like just nothing. Mm. But it's kind of like only if it's needed, right? Yeah. And I'm just like, like that. Yeah. I'm like, I feel all the things. Yeah. I feel it all. <laughs> I have to share it. I have to get it out. It's like poison to keep it in. Yeah. I'm like, I need it. And he's just like, oh, this doesn't need to be said. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, so well, we balance it out. It's good. Yeah. yeah. Well, that was awesome. Thanks, Cara. So Thanks. where can people find you? Uh, you can find me on, don't come to my house, that's weird, don't do that. <laughs> um, find me kicking around the Gold Coast. Um, I have Instagram, which is Cara Saundo. Um, couldn't get Cara Saunders. <laughs> and, Who's um, got that? We need, we need to go and um, I know. turd them, turd right, bomb I know. them. Right? And I I'm ended up doing it because Matt's is like Matt Saundo. So I was like, yeah, oh, I'll just have cute. the same as him then. <laughs> and just went Cara Saundo. Um, yeah, you can find me there. Got YouTube. Active, uh, yeah, YouTube. I've got Cara Saunders athlete. We're just kind of like vlogging, picking up with that. Um, what about new business if people want to go buy some cool? Mm. Yeah, it's Active Eyewear, A-C-T-I-V, and then Eyewear, so the E's kind of shared. Um, we yeah, have so many cool styles. So we we'll we got new stuff, day, new stuff coming through. It's been, it's been, I've been like in the trenches with that since I came back, just like sorting stuff out. So. It's going well. Yeah. Good. Yep. Just trying to find the balance of having me in it. I have a lot of value in it, but also need to train and yep. mm. do all that stuff. So just cool. finding that balance, right which ratio. is good now. We've got really good staffing team. Yeah, yeah. Good balance. That was really, really important. Mm. Um, your your crew is everything. Oh, yeah. It's, the only th- yeah. it's everything. Now that we got Fats, it's awesome. Um, <laughs> she's good. She's fats. A, yeah, shout out to Fats. <laughs> is she happy there? And no, then, she's good. She sounds really good. Nah, she's good. She's good. She's really like, good. stay away. And it's, and it's like another babysitter. I can like drop Scotty off to her in the office and go do stuff if I need. So, um, but yeah, buy some sunnies also. We got some yeah. cool stuff coming. Yeah. I need sunnies. Absolutely. Yeah. Lee. <laughs> That's right. good. Thanks, Cara. Oh. Thanks, Cara. Good Thank to you. see you. And yeah. we'll see you next time. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Another couple hours. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Vogue chat. <laughs>